Hi, I'm Eric Jones, and this is Verse by Verse, a short podcast all about exploring the insights and lessons of the inspired Word of God. Jesus didn't use the word new very often during his ministry, at least not among his words recorded in Scripture. That actually shouldn't surprise us because one of the Messiah's purposes was not to bring something completely new, but to magnify or exalt the law that had already been given in the Old Testament. You can read a prophecy about that in Isaiah 42, verse 21. But there are a couple things Jesus said he was bringing that was new, and one of them is found in John 13, verses 34 and 35. Let's read it. Jesus said in verse 34, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Verse 35, By this all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. So Jesus said he was giving a new commandment. In other words, a commandment that didn't exist before. But then he went on to talk about love, loving one another. Well, students of the Bible should immediately start to scratch their heads, because love was not new. Love had been a command from God all the way back in the earliest chapters of the Old Testament, long before the coming of Jesus in the first century. Consider this law given through Moses in Leviticus 19, verse 34. You shall not take vengeance, nor bear any grudge against the children of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Then a few verses down in verse 34, in the context of how they should treat foreigners living among them, they were told, The stranger who dwells among you shall be to you as one born among you, and you shall love him as yourself. For you were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. So the command to love your neighbor, both your kinsman and the foreigner, was embedded into the law given over 1,400 years before Jesus came. So now back to Jesus' statement in John 13, verse 34. A new commandment I give to you that you love one another. Well, if loving one another was quite old, again, how could Jesus say it was something new? Well, the answer is simply emphasized in the rest of the verse. We didn't emphasize it in our first reading. Let's read it again. A new commandment I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you that you also love one another. The key is that phrase, as I have loved you. The commandment to love was not new, but what was new was Jesus' living and breathing example of what love towards others looks like in practice. The Old Testament simply gave the command, but that command wasn't accompanied by a perfect example of how that should be applied in the flesh. For the Israelites, we could say it was more of a theoretical law. They could hear the words, but they had no tangible, practical example of what that law looked like in practice. Let's make a modern-day comparison. Let's say you are wanting to learn how to drive, but had never ridden in an automobile before and had never actually seen an example of a good, responsible driver ever in your life. Now, you could read a driver's education manual, and it would give you a lot of principles and explain a lot about driving law, but if you never saw an example of how those principles and law functioned in practice, the book would be of very limited value. Few people could just read the driver's manual book and then step into a car for the first time in their life and drive perfectly. No, First, you'd want to be instructed by someone setting an example of what good driving is in practice and how the laws of the road function in practice. Example is so important. And yes, the same goes for the topic of godly love, an extremely important topic, much more important than driving. Just hearing the command to love your neighbor as yourself doesn't show you what that looks like in real life. It doesn't give you anything practical to go on in applying it. You kind of have to figure it out. That's where Jesus' example comes in. His life was a living, breathing personification of love. Everything he did, everything he said, every interaction he had was driven by and modeled perfect love. We should be able to read his example and come away with a clear idea of what godly love looks like in action. 
In fact, when you're reading the gospel accounts, it would be helpful to ask yourself after reading a section that describes something Jesus did or said, how did Christ specifically practice and model love in this instance? Then the next question should be, how can I imitate his example in my interactions with others? Which then leads us to the next verse we're looking at in this episode, verse 35. By this all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. To emphasize how important love is, Jesus then declared it as one of the signs of his true disciples, his true people. The world will be able to identify the true followers of Christ because they practice genuine love. They care for one another. They serve one another. They stick with each other through thick and thin. They forgive one another. They spend time together. They do God's work together. But it's also important to point out that this is not the only sign of Christ's true people. This was one of many signs. This is primarily a sign to those on the outside of God's true church, because even those who know little to nothing about God and the Bible can recognize genuine love and concern when they see it. The sign of love must be accompanied by the other signs that God gave of his true people. Two of those are, one, keeping God's commandments. You can find that in John 13, verse 15. And specifically, observing the Sabbath commandment. You can find that in Exodus 31, verse 13. Yes, there are other signs that identify the true people of God, but we're highlighting the one Jesus gave in John 13 in this episode. So if we want to be a true disciple of Jesus Christ, we must study Jesus' example of perfect love and strive to apply it, because by this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Verse by Verse is a companion podcast to the Daily Bible Verse blog, which you can find on the Life, Hope, and Truth Learning Center. Check out the show notes for more.